You look at people that know what they're doing and you follow what they have done. And there will come a time in your life where you have people that show you the right way to do it and even people that show you the wrong way to do it. And I want you guys to work less and make more at every step, no matter what we're doing. And Jobber allowed us to do that. Hanging out at the LCR Summit here in Atlanta, Georgia, my boy Jeremy Talboy, That's it. who is a fellow Atlanta landscaper here. That's right. And uh, we got to get to know each other because we have very similar stories. Um, you have a huge business here in Atlanta, but we both got our humble starts watching YouTube videos with Jonathan Potoshnik, right. Line Care Millionaire, and Keith Kalfas. That's right. They were kind of my mentors back in the day from the very beginning. And they were mentoring me and, and advising me from a distance, and they didn't even know it. So uh, when I started my company, it was just a mower. And what myself, year was it? 2010. Okay, it's I started 2011. End. Yeah, so it was the very end of the, of the summer, so mm -hmm. technically 2011. But started trying to figure out what I was going to do and uh, naturally started with the research. YouTube, Google, all that stuff, and here comes Jonathan Potoshnik and uh, Keith Kalfas, and I, I watched them and I watched them, and they kind of had the secret sauce of, of how, to, how to get started. So I, I took pieces from them and everybody else that you kind of go – down the rabbit hole, you know, and peace from everybody, and I created my way to, to do it. So here I am now, sitting next to Star. <laughs> I was starstruck because Jonathan was in here. We got to interview him, and he, he's gone on to build his landscaping business that he doesn't even do anything, really. Naylor went there one time, and he didn't even know. They, they have storage units where they keep all their stuff. They don't right. have a shop. Right. He didn't even know the code to get in. Yeah. Like that's how hands off of his business he yeah. is. Yeah. Like he's just the and whole that, thing's just running. That's great. That's great. I don't. I don't. <laughs> I don't subscribe to that. I like to see what's going on day to day. Exactly. But my my point <laughs> in saying all that is, in addition to that, he started a CRM service autopilot. Right. Built it huge and sold it for a boatload of money. Now he travels yeah. the world and stays at five star resorts and has a butler. That's right. <laughs> and, and wings at his house. Right. Not chicken wings, but wings. West wing, east wing. Right. So it's. It, I was like starstruck getting to talk to him because I watched all his videos. Yeah. What was it like seeing Keith and Jonathan for the first time in person after watching all those videos? Same thing. Starstruck, but also there's a level of admiration and and appreciation and respect. And I told both of them when I introduced myself. I just want to say thank you. You know, and, and I'm I'm not an isolated story. There's there's plenty of people out there that they have, I guess, benefited um, from from their advice, and and that's what you do, right? You, you look at people that know what they're doing, um, and you follow what they have done. And there will come a time in your life where where you have people that show you the right way to do it, and even people that show you the wrong way to do it. And those two were two of the people that showed me the right way to do it. And there's a handful of other people, but those were the two most influential. And it was. That's the reason I signed up for this. I've been talking to you. I saw the flyer for it, and I saw that they were here, and it was a no-brainer. I mean, it's right up the street. I got three three of my friends now, right, that are, that are there. So um, it was a no-brainer, and I, it one of the best decisions I've ever made. So uh, super awesome. And when you get to meet them, anybody who's ever been starstruck, you start sweating, you get kind of nervous, you don't know what to say, your hands get clammy, right? <laughs> Eminem, right? Eight miles. I was nudging right, you. Right, I could tell. Yeah. I was like, come on, just go say well, hi. Ke no, well, Keith, everybody else, it was okay. Keith was busy. Keith's on a mission, man. He's setting up his cameras. He's doing all that. So, you know, I give him the respect, let him do his thing. So what did I do? I caught him when he was trying to eat. <laughs> uh. So, but yeah, it was awesome. And uh, again, I think the most important thing to take from that is that the first thing I did was tell them I appreciate it because I don't think they understand how much they helped me. They have no idea. They didn't know me from Adam before today. So uh, again, thank you guys for, for all the instruction and the, the guidance that you didn't even know you were giving me. So I got my start in Lawrenceville, 2011. Where, where, where did you get your start? Tell, tell us the, the yeah, humble so beginning. Swanee, okay. competing with you. Yeah, you know, well, I was uh, I was chucking the truck, man. I was, uh, so was I. That's how I started. <laughs> yeah. So my Genesis story is um, I went to college. I played baseball at West Georgia. I was going to school to be a history teacher. I got a history major, archaeology. I wanted to be Indiana Jones. Uh, watched those movies when I was younger, and that was what I wanted to do, and I wanted to be a, a baseball coach. Well, towards the end of my college career, I decided I wanted to be an entrepreneur. The reason how I came about to that was – watching The Prophet, Marcus Limonis, The Prophet on, on MSNBC or CNBC, uh, Shark Tank, Bar Rescue, programs like that. And it was like, you know what? I think I want to start a business. Uh, I chose landscape because I figured it I had no real world experience at that time. It would be the easiest to learn. 
So my last semester, I, I'm in the back of my classes trying to graduate, figuring out names, drawing up logos for my landscape company. And the day I graduated, I had told my dad, and he said, well, we need to go get you a truck and a mower. And we did. We went down to Howard Brothers. Shout out Howard yeah, Brothers. Yeah, right. Went down there and they Buford, helped me out. Buford Highway 1? Yeah, or? right there in Duluth. Absolutely. Uh, Doug Howard helped oh, us yeah. out, actually. Um, and I didn't even know how to drive the mower. Uh, I got a big zero turn. 48 inch X mark? Oh, it was like a 52 maybe. Okay. But yeah, X mark for sure. And I remember Doug pulled it out and he said, all right, it's all yours. Everything's good. <laughs> we put it on the card, all that. So I, I financed everything. And I was like, Doug, I'm gonna need you to pull it up on the truck. And he's like, really? And I said, yeah, man, never done it before. And I'm not making a fool out of myself here at the Howard Brothers parking lot. So uh, he pulled it up. Yeah, I trained myself a little bit, made a fool out of myself in my own front yard, scalped it, killed the bushes, did all that stuff and went door to door. And what happened was, is I, I figured out my monthly cost. It broke down to about 50 bucks a day. And this is kind of a little divine intervention. It broke down to 50 bucks a day. I knew I needed to make 50 bucks a day to cover my, my truck payment, a little bit of gas and my mower, all that equipment payment. I start go. I go to the neighborhood next door, and I'm driving around. What neighborhood is this? I, I know the area. Vanderbilt. So. Okay. So I live right next to North Gwinnett in North Point. Mm -hmm. Come out, take a left, Vanderbilt right there. There was a real estate agent, and she came out of the house, and she flagged me down, divine intervention. And she said, hey, I'm showing this house tomorrow. Will you cut it for me? Wow. And I said, sure. And she, she said, I will give you 50 bucks. Wow. And I was like, hey. So I cut that grass, and I'm packed up and went home for the day. And I said, if I could just do that every day, we're going to be rocking and rolling and see how I can do it two times a day or three times a day. So that was kind of the gen genesis of that. As we went on, I realized very quickly, I'm not a landscaper and I never was. I was, I'm an entrepreneur. I wanted to be a business owner. My quality of work was not the best. I didn't, I had no formal training. I didn't know. And that's where the, the videos came in, how to price things, how to trim a bush correctly. And that's how they popped up. Mm -hmm. So it, it became very clear to me that I was really good at getting business and meeting people and talking to people and earning their trust and getting them to sign on with me where I, where I struggled was, was executing the mm -hmm. promises and making the, the property look good. So at that point, I started hiring people. I had no choice. It was either hire people and give up that, that income and, and share the money or go out of business and find something else to do. So I, I hired some talented people. And that became very, very apparent very quickly that that was the way to go. That allowed me to, as everybody says, get out of the business, work on the business as opposed to in the business. And then I was able to worry, uh, you know, focus on marketing and finding more people and scaling and, you know, building a business. And that's what I did. We, we focused on residential maintenance for just two years or so. And then I met Ed Sesniak with Georgian Landscape Design. Uh, he was my, my real mentor face to face. I owe a lot to Ed. Ed taught me a lot. Ed was towards the end of his career. He was 70 when I met him. Um, he has since retired and moved to South Carolina. He had his company, Georgian Landscape Design. They did all enhancement work, no maintenance. Mm -hmm. I had a client that wanted a little retaining wall and they said, I need a designer or an architect, a little two foot wall. You don't need an architect for that. I didn't know. So in the Swanee Magazine, if you're familiar, uh, Ed used to write a column in the Swanee Magazine. And so you would open up the first page and it would be a column about something unlandscape related, but he would sign his name, Ed Sesniak, Georgian Landscape Design. So when my client said, I need a designer or an architect for this little wall, which they did not need, I didn't know who to call, but that stuck in my head. I will mm -hmm. go get a Swanee Magazine and I will call Ed. So I did. We had a great conversation. He asked me if I would meet him for lunch, Taco Mac and Swanee. So we went out there, we had, we had some tacos and we hit it off. And he was in every sense of the word, a mentor. And we just clicked and he said, yes, I will come help you. As a matter of fact, all I do is design build and the crew that I use, the subcontracting crew that I use, another divine intervention, they are booked up on their own job for the next three months. So if you would like, I have this little bucket of jobs and we can start rolling together. And so we did. And we, we did job after job after job and we rolled together for four or five years, something like Retaining that. Retaining walls, what, what else? Anything and everything. Sod, irrigation, mulch, plantings, a lot of paver patios. 
a lot of flagstone, outdoor fireplaces, fire pits, anything and everything outside of the, the home. And as we, we rolled, we, we added more things. Um, Ed, Ed, he worked at IBM and Deloitte and he was retired. There's a program in Georgia and I don't know if it still exists, but it did back then where if you were over 50 or 55, you could go back to school for free, kind of like a hope scholarship sort of thing. He was retired from IBM and he was bored. So he went and got a horticulture degree and went to landscape design school. So for him, this was an opportunity for him to stay busy, right? Uh, if you retire, you expire. There's an old expression, right? Mm -hmm. So a lot of people, especially from that generation, they work and work and work. Um, so for him, it wasn't it wasn't a career. He wasn't um, looking looking to get rich or anything. He was well set financially. He was looking to stay busy. For me, on the other hand, I was in my 20s. I'm trying to build something. At the time, I did not have a wife. I did not have any kids. I didn't own a house. I didn't have anything. I had, all I had was big dreams. Mm -hmm. Um, but Ed was, again, a mentor. He, he had a lot of sales knowledge, a lot of just general life knowledge. I mean, the man's 70, right? Uh, he taught me a lot, landscape, business, um, and life. And so there was an issue with that as far as where do we take the company? Because my goals were way up here, and he just he didn't want the burden of all the work. But I, I convinced him that I will handle all that. Um, so we had a profit sharing agreement and I essentially took all of my profit and rolled it into marketing, um, getting an office, hiring somebody to answer the phones and it, it, it worked out well. Um, the thing that Ed gave me, one of the many things he gave me was a great reputation. You know, he had 15, 18 years of just rolling by himself and doing it solo, nothing but five star reviews. I always called him the mayor. He could have run and, and won in a landslide to be the mayor of Swanee. He knew everybody. Mm -hmm. His reputation was stellar. And one of the lessons that he taught me is to be very customer centric. Jeremy, do, and that's why we mesh so well because of ethics and um, integrity. Always do what you got to do to make sure that the customer is taken care of. Um, so with that, I, I already had an awesome little base on the design side of just five star reviews and reputation that I was able to take and put scalability to. Um, so again, I took my portion of the money and I, I built it and we built it into something awesome. And then um, Ed had his first grandchild around 2020, 2019, something like that. And I, I kept telling him, Ed, you need to go. And, and you need, they lived in Charleston. Instead of going to visit every quarter, why don't you think about going out there mm -hmm. and, and living out there? So he, he decided that he was going to and I was able to purchase the, you know, buy him out. Um, so that is my design side. Um, that does all residential design build. I mean, all sorts of makeovers, pools. I mean, anything and everything outside. What revenue do you guys do a year? And what of it is enhancements and what of it is in Okay, so, so last year we did just over $8 million total co company-wide. The, the maintenance is all commercial now, um, even last year. The, the, the maintenance brought in about $1.5 million. That's um, mow, ice, trim, blow. Yeah, but then, you know, I do all commercial. So I do HOAs, I do retail spaces, and I do a lot of apartment complexes. Um, with that is a lot of enhancement opportunity. So the, the numbers get a little muddy and a little gray, and they overlap a lot because the maintenance brings in that, that contracted price, but they all need mulch, they all need pine straw, they all need seasonal color, and then they all need rip and replace of their bushes, this, that, the third. So, but just for easy math, 1.5 million in, in maintenance contracts and then the rest is all design build. What's but, been the biggest job you've ever done? So we actually just finished it. Two years ago, our record at that time was close to just under 600,000. Um, for job, one job? Yeah, residential too. Up in Lula, it's a, a beautiful little cabin home and investor, I will say. He purchased it and he is putting a lot of money into it. And outdoor kitchen, huge outdoor kitchen. Pergolas, the biggest outdoor fireplace I've ever seen. And then just everything else, plants, all sorts of things. However, we passed that this year. We actually just closed out the ticket on it. It was the last project we, we finished in 2023. It was for a apartment complex in, in downtown Atlanta. I'm not 100% sure of the exact total, but it's something like 750000 And that included, I mean, we went in and we took out every tree, 
We took out all the sidewalks. We took out all the bushes. We installed all new drainage. Every downspout, all sorts of, of lateral surface runoff, mitigation, irrigation, all new plants, all new trees, all new sidewalks. All is a very construction oriented. So dog park, we do a lot of dog parks, artificial turf, especially on the apartment side. So I mean, there, there's several other elements I'm leaving out, but that's that's the gist of it. So yeah, we just hit that, and ironically, I guess not ironically, but another blessing, if you will, the investor group for that apartment complex has now asked us to bid a new construction apartment complex and. That bid right now is at $4 million with a $2 million add-on. And I mean, all systems look like they're go. So th that that is going to lead to a bigger, bigger project. And we have negotiated back and forth for quite some time. We're very close to getting to it. And that's why I say we're projected to do $15 million this yeah, year. Yeah, I got you. You know, from $8 million to $15 million. Also, this year we added a pool. Pool designer and project manager and salesperson. And he is one of the best in Atlanta. Who's that? I can't say his name right. at this moment, but I will eventually. But he is top notch. And I anticipate that he's going to take us to the next level on, on the residential side. So we did $8.3 million last year. And I anticipate 15 to $18 million when I add those two components together. On top of the, the, the organic growth of the commercial maintenance side, which yields all these other opportunities. So... You know, we got big plans and going back to the, how I started the story, you know, I, I always had big dreams and it all started with a mower and an idea and then watching these guys, you know, how, how to uh, how to price commercial properties, how to price just anything. And so, again, I, I thank them a lot. They, they had a lot to do with my my success and how I got started. That's fantastic. What operations do you have a CRM or how do you run the billing and everything? Yeah. So great question. Back in 2018 ish, I would say, you know, we were still, when we would give a proposal to a client, a homeowner for let's say a, a patio and some sod. I mean, we would type it all out. We had a little template. It was a word document mm. and we would, it would project elements, this, that third with, with an associated price. And then Somehow on my Instagram or something, Jobber came across. And so I did a lot of research and I looked at Jobber and I looked at Service Autopilot and I looked at Yardbook and a handful of other CRMs. And when I compared everything at that time, the best fit was Jobber price wise and, and capabilities. So that's what I went with. I will tell you, it's the best decision I ever made. I actually had a designer who joined in 2016 and he's a, he, he's, we call him our senior designer, one, because he's been there the longest with me, and two, he's the oldest. <laughs> so he will say, I really put the senior in senior designer. But the old adage, it's hard to teach an old dog new, tr new tricks. He gave me a lot of pushback, and he will tell you, I gave you a lot of pushback. But once I learned it, and it didn't take very long, best decision I ever made, because it's all about efficiency. I preach in our morning meetings all the time, I want you guys to work less and make more at every step no matter what we're doing. And Jobber allowed us to do that. And the thing I love about Jobber, and I'm sure it's true for, for other CRMs, is you know they're, they're constantly adjusting. And they will listen to people like me and, and take our recommendations and they will put them in. For instance, Jobber last year or two years ago added pictures to the estimates. I actually called that in. Now I'm not, wow. saying, I'm not saying that I'm the one that, that made that happen, but that was an idea that I had, and Jobber allows you to write them an email or talk to somebody and say, hey, I have a recommendation, and they will, they will do their due diligence, and maybe it makes it, maybe it doesn't. But uh, that's one thing that I love about it is, is the fact that they customize it based on um, their client's feedback, and it, it's cloud-based, so it can be adjusted 24-7. But that's what we use, and I use it for the, the design side, Georgian landscape design. I also use it for North Georgia landscape management, which is the co commercial landscape. And I also have Haven Outdoors, which is the pools. Um, so I use it for all three of them. I have three separate accounts. Um, I like it that way. They do integrate, but I like to keep the money separate, so. Nice. Yeah. Well, I've been posting golf videos on, <laughs> on the social media. You've seen any of those? Absolutely. So. I can shoot in the 60s, 70s, or 80s. Yeah, it just depends on the weather, right? <laughs> yeah, but, but I've never played Cherokee. I've heard about it. Absolutely. Where's it at? What road is so it? So it's down in Sandy Springs. Okay. Um, they call, it's called Cherokee Town and Country Club. There's actually okay. another location, I believe, downtown, but 
I'm not sure if there, the, there is a golf course there, but okay. Sandy Springs is where the golf course is. They have the north and the south. Prima. It's nice. Phenomenal. Phenomenal. You're going to get me out there. Bucket list. Well, yeah, I'm going to get you out there with my friend. Okay. So, yeah. so your friend's a member? Or? Yeah. Duval is his name. What's up, Duval? All right, Duval. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah, he's got you. He's got you. Come on. Is it yeah. David Duval or? No, I wish. Okay. Right? <laughs> ah, yeah. Duval. Du Duval Brumby is his name. Yeah, absolutely. Go. Good friend of mine, insurance agent. A lot of commercial stuff actually handles all my policies. So, no, but yeah, it, it, if anybody has a chance, and uh, you will get yours. It is phenomenal. It is a bucket list kind of course. And then, you know, they have a caddy program, which makes it extra special. I, right? I caddied uh, s seventh grade through college. I caddied. Yeah, I caddied at Bears Double. Best. That's how I learned yeah. how to play. Yeah. So, um, Sully, uh, he's our caddy, typically. Okay. He, he's my favorite. They have a whole bunch, but he was my first. And now, he's, now, do you he's take a I cart or you walk? I mean, you can take a cart, but they're going to make fun of you. Okay. So, so we walk. walk. Okay. Absolutely. I, I, but the, car, the, the, the caddies take your bags. Um, so you're just walking with your group and you're having nice conversations. The caddies will kind of get you at the tee box, get you set, give you a direction and club you and all that stuff. And then yeah. they head down. So I might film a few videos out Absolutely. there too. Absolutely. I, I would expect see, nothing less. See. I would expect nothing less. So yeah, I look forward awesome. to it. It's gonna be awesome. Let people know how they can connect with on online your business and whatnot. Yeah, so uh, we're based in Alpharetta, Georgia. We're in the Atlanta market, NorthGeorgiaLandscape.com, and then GeorgianLandscape.com is our install side. On Instagram, it is Georgian Landscape Design, and then obviously North Georgia Landscape Management. I have two Instagrams because I, I kind of run them separate, and I put up all sorts of videos from morning meetings with the guys to to guys out there building stuff or. Even the crew doing their, their calisthenics in the morning um, to get loose and get ready and get that blood flowing so they can go out and win the day. Nice. Yeah. And thanks again to Naylor for hosting this event, to Kenny, our producer. What's up, Kenny? Kenny V. Kenny yes, V, the man. So uh, this, this place is awesome. Yeah, it is. Fantastic. So uh, thanks to LCR Summit, uh, the Creator Clubhouse, for hosting us here. And uh, hopefully on Instagram soon you'll be seeing me. I don't want to predict the score. What do you shoot, Jeremy? Uh, so it, again, it depends on the weather. Okay. You know, the weather. I mean, yeah, I've shot in the in the upper 60s, but that was back when I was when I was playing a lot. Honestly, when I play with you, it'll probably be 105, but it will be the prettiest 105 you've right. ever seen. Okay. So if I can keep it in play, I'm gonna hit some <laughs> some nasty shots. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Let's yeah. make it happen. Absolutely, it will happen. Mark it down. All right, let's do it. Thanks for coming, and uh, thanks again to everybody. And we'll catch you on the next one. All right.